Hi everyone. Welcome to Infrastructure of Internet. Um, we will have talks here mainly uh, focused on big data and uh, cloud and the correlation between them. So at first we will start with a talk called Cluster Master, Manage Your Applications with Missiles and Docker. We have here Christian and Tudor. Um, Christian is a software developer. He shares a strong passion for big data and distributed systems, and he's a frequent speaker at the big data uh, meetups in Cluj. We have Tudor, who has over 15 years of experience in the IT field, and who is also a frequent speaker of the big data science meetups. Guys? Okay. We're going to start this. It's been a while since I've done one of these in English, so please excuse me if I start. I'm glad to see that a lot of you came to see this talk. And uh, I'm going to start by presenting ourselves. So my name is Tudor Montano. I'm currently a software architect and software development manager for the Kumo team at Yardi, where we're doing various uh, big data and machine learning related uh, applications. Uh, with me, I have Christian. Uh, who's uh, been working with me for the last few years in the team. Uh, and today we're going to talk about Mesos and Docker. Uh, first of all, I want to know how many of you are familiar with Mesos and Docker. So we have a starting point. Okay. Quite a few. Okay. Uh, so my presentation is uh, question-centric. And uh, I want to make this uh, presentation around the real case scenario, right? Uh, and these are actual problems that uh, we uh, we encountered during uh, our uh, the last few years during our development. So, uh, what are we currently doing? We're building a data ingestion platform where we're basically going uh, to the internet and fetching a lot of documents and uh, well pages in this case. Uh, and uh, while doing that, we try to enrich them uh, with metadata that we can extract from the page itself. And uh, we try to do a lot of processing on top of them and make them available as soon as possible to our end users, right? So, uh, of course, uh, like probably many of you, we uh, we started with a uh, everything is built on top of a virtualized uh, environment. So we started by statically partitioning our infrastructure uh, using. Uh, various forms of virtualization. In this case, originally we started with OVIR, uh, if I remember correctly, and now we moved to OpenStack. But the biggest problem that we encountered was that uh, we were using uh, these resources in a very bad way, right? Because once you statically allocate something, that becomes uh, available uh, in your infrastructure for a certain period of time. But you can't really uh, manage the usage of it, right? Because sometimes you use it 100% that resource, but uh, most of the times, what you use, you will just use it for I don't know 20 or 0%, right? So uh, the biggest problem was how do we manage this uh, in a smart way? Because we have all these crawlers that sometimes need to run, but once uh, once they're done, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, once they're done, uh, they need to uh, basically free all the resources. So we thought of moving into a dynamic partitioning system. And uh, originally, we looked at uh, Yarn. Uh, are you familiar with Yarn? Yarn is the resource scheduler for Hadoop. Are you familiar with Hadoop? Okay. So basically, what happens when, uh, when you are running a Hadoop job in a distributed environment? You are uh, uh, asking Yarn to provide you with some resources in your cluster, and basically Yarn uh, goes to your cluster to your slaves and says, okay, I need some space to run these applications and uh, uh, Yarn basically takes care of all these discussions between the, the manager and the, well, the master and the uh, slaves. And uh, we wanted to build our application on top of that, but MapReduce uh, is kind of slow and we wanted to move away from that. And of course, we already had an infrastructure, well, uh, a code base in place. Uh, which was running in a certain way. By the way, we're doing pro for all this stuff. And uh, 
uh, uh, the problem with Perl is that you can't go uh, and say, I want to use this much memory for my application or this much CPU, right? You can do that with Java. Uh, you cannot do it with CPU Java, I think, if I remember correctly. But uh, we needed to uh, basically control all the resources that are going to do into our cluster. So, uh, enter uh, Okay, so I took the definitions for both messes and Docker, so we're going to start on top of that because I think it's the easiest way to explain uh, what Docker is, and I'm going to uh, do this in a, uh, I'm going to add some details to this uh, definition. So basically, uh, Docker uh, is some sort of a form of um, virtualization, it's not virtualization per se, but basically it's leveraging some of the functionality uh, uh, within your application, or from the container, uh, straight onto your uh, uh, machine, your host that's running the Docker. Yeah, on top of it. Uh, and Docker provides uh, the isolation that I mentioned. Docker provides us with the uh, limitations that we can set on top of uh, uh, our application. Because in this case, we're running uh, a virtual machine as an application, right? So uh, Docker allows us to uh, set limits like memory limits and CPU limits. And even this limit. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, obviously, uh, like I mentioned, we needed a smart way to uh, manage our resources. And uh, after doing some digging on the internet, uh, I finally, uh, I finally uh, stopped that approach, saying, "Yeah, maybe you should use Docker Messes for for some of this stuff." And Messes has a really cool thing, but besides. Besides being able to uh, create a cluster where you can basically centralize all your resources, right? Because at this point we're building a, a huge computer. We're not looking at each computer within the cluster separately. We're looking at uh, we're looking at it as a whole. So uh, I'm not I'm never going to say I have uh, 50 computers that have one gig of memory or and then ten three CPUs, right? I'll always say I have uh, 50 gigs of uh, memory and, uh, I don't know, 150 CPUs, right? Uh, and this is a cool thing because uh, Mesos actually hooks up with Docker and uh, you basically get the best, the best of both worlds, like in the Hannah Montana stuff. Uh, so, what is essentially Mesos? Mesos is an execution platform, uh, but not on its own. Um, because it needs, it needs to run applications at some point. But uh, think of it like this. I'm going to Mesos and I'm negotiating for uh, resources within our cluster, right? And um, just say, uh, I want to run an app and I need five CPUs for it and five gigs of RAM and I want to start, I don't know, 15 instances, right? And what's, uh, what's nice about it that the, the frameworks that work, with the applications that work on top of Mesos, think of Mesos as being a, a kernel for your operating system. So you basically build this computer and you need something to run, uh, like an operating system to run your applications on top of it. If you don't have an operating system on top of your computer, it's just junk, right? So, uh, oh, oh. Uh, and it's also, besides being an execution platform, it's also a deployment system. Uh, basically, uh, every time you're running an application in Mesos, uh, you don't really care where it runs, it's just running somewhere, doing the job. You don't have to explicitly go to that machine and say, okay, I want SSH into this and uh, load, I don't know, the init scripts and all the other stuff. So, uh, these are the two major characteristics for this. So, and I mentioned frameworks. Masses on its own doesn't do very much. Uh, it just does this uh, scheduling, resource scheduling, where uh, a client connects to Mesos and uh, basically ask for resources and then he gets an offer of resources and they can uh, either accept or uh, decline the, uh, the request. So on top of it, we've got the frameworks. So like in any operating system, uh, on top of your kernel, your operating system, you're running applications. This is an alias for applications. Frameworks is an alias for applications, right? So uh, let me give you a few examples. Uh, and we're actually going to demo all of this stuff. Chris is going to take care of it. He actually prepared something. Um, and you can 
deploy everything that you built on your uh, DigitalOcean account if you want. Um, so the first application that's uh, actually pretty popular and it's uh, maintained by Mesosphere is called Marathon. And it's the equivalent of, I don't know if you're familiar with Linux, but if you're not, it's the equivalent of uh, uh, Unity or Upstart in Ubuntu, if you're familiar with that, or uh, if you're a uh, Windows guy, it's, uh, it's the services.msc uh, interface for it. Uh, so what does Marathon do? It basically uh, takes a request from, uh, from a user, an administrator, and uh, you say to it, okay, uh, I want to run this Docker machine uh, on the cluster and make sure you're giving, uh, you're assigning to this machine uh, one CPU, two gigs of RAM, and run 15, 15 instances of it. And this works really good, really good because uh, ever since we moved to this environment, this marathon is a key component actually of our own infrastructure. Ever since we moved to the Mesos, uh, Mesos has uh, turned out to be uh, the most reliable part of the system. Uh, and this is the way that, it, because of the way that it's structured. Um, Kronos is uh, another framework, another application that's running on top of Mesos. It's uh, built by Airbnb. Uh, it's another key component, uh, as you can expect, in our uh, infrastructure. And it's basically taking care of uh, the Chrome tab. Uh, this is the crop that equivalent uh, in a Linux system or uh, a task scheduler in, in Windows. Windows. So basically, what you're saying, you're, you're doing the same thing. You're saying, uh, I want to run this Docker machine, this application on the cluster. Uh, uh, allocate this amount of memory. Allocate this amount of CPU, and uh, make sure you schedule you schedule it at the, the specific time. So you can you can have all these. Uh, um, both things where you can link uh, execution from one uh, instance of a Docker container to another instance of a Docker container, so you can basically create a pipeline. Uh, Aurora, we're not using Aurora. Aurora is uh, built by Twitter, and it's actually the key component in their infrastructure. They're trying to move everything to Aurora, and Aurora is a little bit of both. It does the same thing that Marathon does, and it does the same thing that uh, Chrome does. Okay, so um, Mesos provides an API uh, where you can uh, basically port your application if you want to integrate it straight into Mesos. Uh, Mesos provides an API uh, on top of it. It's uh, I think it's available through protocol buffers, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we never had the opportunity to try it out, although we're, I personally am thinking about it. I want to build a framework at some point uh, when um, um, we're going to add complexity probably to our infrastructure, but uh, at this point, this is not the case. So other uh, uh, frameworks that work, work on top of uh, best are so HDFS, uh, the uh, distributed file system component for Hadoop, uh, because like I mentioned, uh, Hadoop and Yarn, uh, Mesos and Yarn uh, are not that different. It's just different in the way that uh, uh, they uh, actually work. But as a functionality, they provide resources for within a cluster. So HDFS, Cassandra, Spark, Storms, and various MPI frameworks and other stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with some of these. I'm sure Cassandra, everybody knows what Cassandra is, is the database. Spark is the, the new thing for distributed uh, computing. Uh, Storm is something from Apache, I don't know exactly what it does, sorry. And Jenkins is, uh, this is a really cool thing. You can run Jenkins on top of Mesos, so basically every time you're doing a build, you're allocating some resources in your cluster, you're executing your application there, or your build in this case, and once that's done, you just read those resources, and these resources get back to, uh, uh, to the cluster. So they're available for somebody else to use. Um, there's another cool thing from Mesosphere, which is called DCOS, and it's a data center operating system. Basically, it's a UI on top of, uh, of Mesos, where they're providing all the tools that I mentioned before. So um, imagine this. If Mesos were to be an operating system, uh, in order to install applications on top of an operating system, you'll need some sort of a package manager, right? So Docker is exactly that. Uh, and Docker Hub, in this case, or your private registry, Docker registry. 
you can basically install applications on top of Vesks, on top of your so-called supercomputer. So, uh, what's the architecture on top of, on top of that? So, um, on the right-hand side, my right-hand side, uh, you've got the frameworks uh, which are interacting with the master. Now, uh, for redundancy, we uh, it's it's recommended that you add three masters uh, on, on top of uh, uh, your infrastructure, where you have all these maps, masters discussing uh, between them via the, uh, Zookeeper, and Zookeeper is there just for establishing for doing leader leader selection because. At one point, you've got only one uh, master managing the slaves on the left hand side, my left hand side. So, uh, as you can imagine, these slaves can be all sorts of uh, machines, and there's a really cool thing that you can do. Every time you're basically running a, an application in uh, Mesos to one of the frameworks listed on the right hand side, uh, you can go and say, I want this, like, you can, you can. Uh, create categories within the uh, slaves which are available in your cluster. Right? You can say uh, these slaves are available in this location, or these slaves, this group of slaves are available. Uh, they they have some special storage, like uh, SSD, SSD storage, stuff like that. And uh, you can you can basically create rules when you're executing your application, saying I want this application to run to run in the fast uh, on the fast slaves or the slow slaves, or I want this application to run. Uh, one instance of it on uh, each slave. Make sure you're not running more than one uh, instance of the application on, on a slave. So, uh, oops, oops. now I'm going to move uh, aside, or step aside, and let Christy uh, demo his stuff. And for that, we probably need to switch left. Okay. So, stop the time. Uh,
Um, I went to I'm going to create a, a, a application so you guys can see how, we, how easy it is. I'm going to run an nginx application, nginx server. We can CPU uh, of, of Google Fan and Ibanic in space. Um, Checks the load on the web application, 
And if the response time of that application is, uh, is too, too large, it will spawn another instance each time. So I have to check here, see if it's on. Maybe I should try to get more instances of that. So basically what, what it does, this web application that I have right here, uh, writes its access log in a MongoDB database. Uh, and the other applications, uh, which is available, in, which is deployed in Kronos, uh, checks the Mongo database every uh, 30 seconds, as I specified here. Uh, and uh, if the time, if the, if the average time uh, to load the page is greater than the threshold, uh, it will start another instance. And as we see now, we have two instances of the application uh, automatically scaled uh, with the load and to the load on the page. And I believe that's about it from my side. Uh, yeah, well, unless you guys have questions, how we're doing all this stuff. These instances are uh, available in a... Uh, so right now, for uh, as a hosting service, internally we're hosting everything on open stack because our infrastructure is built that way. But uh, the test right here is available for uh, uh, DigitalOcean. So as long as you have a DigitalOcean account, you can just pull out the code, pull out the Vagrant files on top of it, and make sure you put your key in, also uh, your API key, and it will basically simulate and build up all this infrastructure. Yes, there was somebody else in the chat. Yeah, sure. So do you use this also for scaling your database instances? No. Uh, actually, the support for persistent storage has been added only in the last version, and it's still beta. Uh, we Well, authorization, uh, Mesos for Marathon, by default, has got uh, authorization on uh, it. We haven't configured running everything on top of, uh, uh, well, privately. We've got two layers that are going, going outside. So, uh, uh, authorization meaning more like, uh, um, okay. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think it's supporting authorization right now. It's just authentication. And the second one, how does this compare? Solutions like Docker Swarm and yeah, not just Docker Swarm. Uh, I, I have Docker Swarm. Uh, I did try Coro uh, as though. Um, I think it's it's up to you whether you want to choose one or another. But uh, Marathon and Mesos have been uh, around for a while. It's got support from big companies like here. Uh, so uh, not like that Docker Swarm doesn't have support from other companies. But uh, this is the flavor that we chose, and we basically went with it. 
that's the best decision that we could make at that point. But none of the options that you described uh, might be lost in the future, so we might use that at some point. Yes, so your applications are based okay. on uh, yes, Docker containers, uh, which are based on Docker images. And occasionally when you use containers, some images become uh, unused, and you don't need them anymore. And they can occupy a lot of uh, disk space. So basically, how do you deal with cleaning up all the resources? So we left actually that subject for the system administrator to work on. So one of the jobs is basically clear. Uh, uh, let me be 